You good? Beloved believers, Assalamu alaikum. Is it good? Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Who are the Kala Kala in San Amintin? Wa Ukrujahu Men Dulimati in Lenua. Benahmaduhu. Wan Nasainahu. Wan Nastog Firuhu. Noob and Nubi he. Wan Natawakalu Alehi. Naudu Bila, may Sir Ruby and Fusina, why say Yati? I am a man. May he to Allah, Bola Mudil Eleh, for may you deliver for lay her dear leh. I shall do and lay Eleh in the law. Wah dehu, lay Sharika leh, Lehul Muk, Valehul Hamd, or who are Ala Kulish and Kodir, why shall do and Mohammed and Abduhu, or a Suluhu, Salahu Alehi, while Ali was Sabihi, Edge, my in, I'm a bar. So again, we say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Always beginning with Allah's name, calling on Allah, asking for His help. And we begin the day with Allahu Akbar. Allah is bigger, and as we said in the Eid, Allah is bigger over all that is big. Uh, so we give Him praise. We give Him thanks, uh, complete and perfect praise and thanks, for because He is the only one that deserves that, and He deserves to be given it, as you say, kathira, kathira, uh, much. Much, much. So without hesitation, without reservation, without embarrassment, I bear witness that there is but one God, one Allah, one supreme being, one creator whose life is without need. We just undergone 29, 30 days of the month of Ramadan. We fasted, but we had to eat. We had to eat. We had to break that fast at the end of the day and we had to eat. Uh, but Allah, he does not eat. Allah is not fed. He feeds all. He's free from food. He's free from all types of substance. He's free from change. He's free from rest. He's free from all limitations of time, all limitations of space. All those things we're subjected to. Everything that's created is subjected to. Everything that we just say right now, but Allah is free from all those things. Allah doesn't increase. Allah does not diminish. He is today as he's always been. We can't even fathom how long it has been. We just know they say the earth is 4.6 billion years old. The earth, just this earth that we're on. And they say much of it is that, that's what they say, 4.6, but they keep going back. A lot, even back then, beyond that, how he was, he said he is today, this very day, as he's always been, as he's always been. He is not a body with a form like us. We're a body, we have a form. We, the soul is a gift to the body, and it has form. A lot not that he's not substance. He's not substance. And no substance can manifest itself within him and no substance can be manifest without him so he is Allah he is Allah and if we stay out there looking for Allah do you know we'll never find him we'll never find him we can't stay out there and not look in here if we don't look in here then that's what we're missing Ibrahim alayhi salam our beloved prophet who was also an imam of all the nations, he said, when they say, Ibrahim, how are you going to find your way? When they put him out, his father, they put him out. He said, how are you going to find your way? And he said, Ella thee, the one, Petrani, Fe'innehu, Se'yehdini, the very one who originated this, me, fairly, he, surely, without a doubt, will guide me. Look here, I'll find it. You, you ask me something that is no issue for me. He looked out, then he, then he understood. Hmm? That's what Allah said. He wants to look, he wants to look in. He said, Fanahnu uh, Akrabu. Fanahnu Akrabu. He lay he min hubble warid. So Allah made it a matter of revelation for us. He said, well, he is close. We are Akrabu. Closer, closer. That means closer. We know kabara means big. 
But Akbar means bigger, right? We say Akbar means bigger. So uh, 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 Karabe means close, but Akrabu means closer. So Allah said he is closer, closer. He wants us to understand this. He's giving us an ideal. He said, I am closer or closer, Elihi, closer to you. Men hubble warid. Now they didn't have no idea. They didn't, they didn't have the signs of the body back then when this was revealed that we have signs of the body now. So they under, but they understood this. Hubble warid, they understood it was the veins in the neck. That this was the source. But they used to use a sword to cut that. They know when they cut that, it was, it was over. They understood. They know how, how important that was. So they, they, when Allah revealed this, they understood. They understood more how close Allah was to them. And, they, and from that point on, when was, they, they never doubted Allah. And that should tell we should never doubt that Allah is ever present. That's why they made so much progress. Because they never doubted how close Allah was to them, despite what the odds were. Despite how large the enemy numbers were, they didn't doubt. They didn't cry. Allahu ma'ana, right? Allah is with us. When Abu Bakr, Allahu anhu, and our beloved Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were in the cave. And Abu Bakr got scared because there was nothing between them. I mean, that, they didn't have anywhere to go. They had nowhere else to go. It, it was no, there was no out on the back. It was just the front. And if the enemy came, which the enemy was coming. That's why Abu Bakr got nervous. And the law revealed. La Tazan. La Tazan. Don't despair. Don't be afraid. And the Allahu ma'ana. Verily, surely. Allahu ma'ana. And we should say that. Remember, don't forget that, brother. So say it to yourself. Allahu ma'ana. Allah is with us. And then Allah let him know. So it wasn't two in the cave, it was three. And they didn't get them. And Allah did things, wonderful things, that have been recorded in history now. We put the spider web up there, and they knew nobody did. In their mind, there's nowhere possible I could be in there. We was just behind them. That spider web would have been interrupted. The bird would have been moved. How the bird is settled? They said that none of that could have happened. Look how Allah, those things that are between life and death. Look, at, look what was between life and death. Small, feeble things. But greatness was behind those small, feeble things. And Allah wanted us to never forget. That he is with us. He's so close to us. So they understood that. And we know now, we translate, they translate it now as a juggler vein. Okay, they didn't understand it as that now. They say juggler vein, but it really just means those veins in the neck, those things that carry the blood to the brain, the oxygen. That, they understood that. And you cut that off, there's no food now. No more food. No more food going to the brain. And so Allah wants us to know, brothers, he wants us to know, sisters, that he is as close to you as the source, that very source that feeds your brain. He wants us to know that he put that, made it a matter of revelation, that very source that feeds the brain, that controls all the functions of the body. And you know how many nerves in the body? That baffles us. They are, they are over, that, that's controlled by this. The oxygen goes in all this stuff. There are over 100 billion nerves. Over 100, over that, not that, but over that, in the body. And once you cut this, all that, you, no more communication. No more communication. And Allah, wanted, he, he made that a matter of revelation. And he wants to really come to the fact and say, in fact, Allah, he is the source. He's closer than the source, but he wants to know that he is the source that feeds your brain. He is that source. He wants to come to that conclusion. And as Ramadan, we just come out of Ramadan, as that has taught us that if you just turn off the foolishness, Turn that off. Let that stuff go. We, we better do that for 29, 30 days. Turn the foolishness of the world off and apply your senses, your five senses. Allah said, if you just do that and listen to Allah, that's what we're supposed to do this Ramadan. Turn that stuff off. Listen to Allah. Listen to the Quran and follow Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah let us know that you will connect brother, you will connect, sister, and you'll keep and you'll gain back the life that Allah intended for you. That's how you get it back. Don't start going back, turning that stuff back on. Don't turn that foolishness back on. How are you going to get that kind of increase? How are you going to get to have that kind of connection? And they want to start severing that connection. We don't want to do that, brother. We don't want to do that, sister. You know, Allah through Ramadan, want us to really have complete dependency on Him. 
to see him. The baby comes just like that, but he talks about that cord. Hubble, the same thing, sorry, same word, Hubble, the umbilical cord, the same word is used. That's cut. No more depends on the mother, but now you got to depend on the law. That's what the law wants us to understand. That's what Ramadan is telling us. When that cord is cut, he cuts us off from the material. He said, you got to depend on me. I need you to depend on me. He don't want you to depend on your past performance. People say they depend on their past performance. God is good. A lot of want you to depend on that. He don't want you to even rely completely on your talents. He don't want you to rely completely on your personality, your status, your skills, your abilities. He wants you to depend on him completely in all your daily battles. And we have battles. About the first battle is to get up. That's where it starts. That's the first victory. Get up and make the prayer. Now, don't just get up and get up and do the things like you do. That's the first battle right there. To get up on time, not late, and be making the prayers up every day. Get, that's the, the battle. The time the clock goes off, the battle begins, right? Depending on how much you're under that cover, how warm it is and cold, whatever the case might be. But that's where the battle. Allah said, depend on him for that. That's where it begins, right there. The first victory. And then keep things moving in that course. Why does he want us to do that? Why? As we understand through Ramadan, because it is his plan. Not mine. Not yours. It is his plan, his purpose, his will that will ultimately succeed. Nothing else. Nothing else. We don't want to go against that. We, we are understood, uh, understanding the Muslim submit our will to the will of Allah. Uh, Allah he, he has a will for my life. He has a purpose for my life. If I don't submit to his will, I'm not going to be able to maximize that. And I'm not going to be able to connect with that. And I'm not going to be able to, to have the intended purpose. I miss my purpose, and I'll be like other people, trying to find themselves, right? We hear people saying that, I'm trying to find myself. Still trying to find themselves. People are looking, they're wanting, they want to know. But Allah is showing us how we can get that, and we can be successful. Confidence. Confidence. That's an asset. And we're supposed to have confidence. You know, Allah wants us to know that the source of our abilities, the source of our competence, should be his presence in our life. Don't you, don't you see that's what gave the believers during the time of Rasulullah, so Allah alayhi wa sallam, in fact, they gave even, even those who were just people connected to their best human nature, those in captivity, those, in fact, even, even now, even, I mean, it's, it's interesting just to see the devastation that's taking place uh, with the Palestinians. And then they interview them, they interview them, the ones out there in Rafa, they interview them. And you see, I mean, if you ain't listening to it, you, you, I mean, we look at it, I mean, we are, uh, uh, it's hurting us, it should hurt us. But what they're registering, they got faith in Allah. And they know they're going to be good with Allah. And they say they're praying for the people that's doing this to them. They, I mean, can you imagine a mother, the mo mothers? They, 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 the ch children are dying from starvation, all kinds of things. They, they say, I just want my child to die in my arms. And they're praying for, for, for them. They know they would Allah. And if you've been reading the Quran, and we should have been reading the Quran all this month, we know that you're in that situation. Allah got you. You're an unwilling martyr of a higher cause. And Allah is going to make sure that your death will not be in vain. Allah's going to make sure that. They're going straight. They're unwilling martyrs. They didn't ask for that. They understand it. They understand it. I mean, go and pull up. It's, a lot of that stuff is out there now. I mean, it's just. It's, it's a hot woman just to hear it. And you, might, you would think they'd be a, but to say they're praying for them people. Can you imagine that? Sound like, sound like uh, us, as uh, African Americans, you know, with our situation, everything has been done to us. They, they, they were so scared of us when we were free. I mean, they were really scared. They did a lot of things because they didn't know what we were going to do. And they still are. A lot of them still are. That, that's why they didn't want the weapons and those kind of things. That's why they keep them checking those things. They want to keep them too. They still don't know. Then you got, you got the, 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 the Caucasian go down there to Emmanuel, shoot up the African Americans, devastating racism, hate. And, then they, and, they, and, they, and they say, forgive him. They pray for him. Just, can you imagine that? They did, the guy just killed the loved ones. And they say, we're praying for him. May Allah forgive him. They didn't use a lot term of law, but they say God. But the same thing, right? Same kind of thing. Mercy, compassion, even in the midst of that. And Allah got him. But Allah, what he want, that's, how he want, that's what he wants us to be. 
He wants us to be there. And understand that it's his presence in our lives. That's the, what will give us the most confidence. And you know, confidence, confidence really, is, in definition, it's a rational assessment of your abilities. So if you, got, if you want to have confidence, then you, you, your, you, your abilities, you don't have them unless Allah gives them to you. So you know Allah's there. And that's what should give you confidence. Whatever you have, Allah is with you. And that's what Allah wants you to do. He wants you to be at that point. You have to know him. Our know, beloved Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and peace be upon him, he said, he who knows himself. If you know yourself. Now, we just said, Ibrahim said, look, the one who did this, gave me this, originated all of this. So I'm going to get the guidance from. So our prophet, he said, he who knows himself knows his Lord. The Lord. He said, Rob. He used the term Rob. He didn't say knows his God. He said, Rob. The one who originated it, brought him from nothing to something that was there, sustained, nourishes, takes it to his destiny. If you know your you know your Lord. And you definitely, you know, they just say, he's called a black man God, but the black man know himself, you know he wasn't God. <laughs> and a white man know he ain't God either. You know, you know yourself, you know. A lot of them want us to see himself. We can't, he's too big. You can't see Allah. You can't see Allah. There are many that want to see. They can't. Get you. Moses wanted to see. Say you can't. Look at the tree. You know, you've seen a few things. It's talking about the creation. You know, but he, Allah wanted. He, that's not what Allah wanted. He don't want to see Himself. Wanted to see ourselves. And He wants to understand. We don't have to believe in a God that needs us to worship Him. I mean, what we're doing? What we, we're coming here? We're calling in obedience. Allah don't need this. He need us to fast. He said fasting for me, but he say prayers for him too, right? Thank for Allah. He don't need it. It's for us. It's for us. He don't need. He don't need anything. He don't need us to thank him. We say Alhamdulillah because we we are we, in debt. We owe Allah. We Allah don't need it. You think he's going to add anything, take anything? No, he don't need us to do it. the prayers, the bowing that we do, the prostration. I don't know how long we stand. None of that. We don't need any of that. He gave us Ramadan. He said, this is the month of Ramadan. This is the month that the Quran, the Quran. This is the month that the Quran was sent down. And he said, not for him. He said, uh, uh, Hudan Linnas. Hudan Linnas. The same word that Ibrahim used. El Ladi Fetorani for Innahu Sayyidini. The guidance. The guidance. And so Allah said he gave us the guidance. Because why? That's what our nature wants. Our nature wants guidance from the one that's given it the nature. Our own nature wants that. That's why, I mean, I've spoken to even some of our seniors. They, they were not, not even able to read the Quran in Arabic because it's just, it's just some of them at this age, they just, but they say they just listen to it. They say it's not the same. They say I've read it. They've been reading it. They say when they hear that, it's different. It just does something different. Because the soul, the nature, it knows. And we should listen, brothers. And we try to learn. Those who can, I mean, some of them, I mean, again, they, they're where they are and they're getting what they can get. But you, who can, you should learn as much as you can. Learn as much as you can. That's why Allah sent it down. It's guidance. The guidance is there. It's there. And the more you learn, the more you see, you begin to see more connections and things. Allah say, and he gives you more. He said, not just guy, who then let that? Why be in that? See, men who then? He said, explanation. In the Quran itself, he said, in the Quran is guidance, but also in it, it explains the guidance that you're receiving. So you, you got to connect with it. You have to read it. My, my, my daughter was in a, one of these uh, Islamic programs that the lawyers, the women lawyers do. They had a two-week program. They got all these different women come from around the world. And she was in the program. And, and she was, she couldn't understand majority of the women that came from other countries outside of America, they never read the Quran. They say they're told, don't read the Quran. You can't, don't, don't, don't even try to read it. So they spend more time in the Hadith and let somebody else, but they never, they never read the Quran for themselves. They never read it for themselves. Cody couldn't, I mean, and she, she just couldn't understand that. And, and of course, again, we, don't, we understand how, if you understand, if you travel and you see how some of these societies are, we understand tribalism is still strong in a lot of these places. Uh, we see what's, what's happening in Afghanistan right now, how they're reverting back 
to oppression and women can't education is something the prophet said that if you do that you get two women you get in paradise and because they're oppressing not no education that's the kind of stuff is happening uh, and, and that's all happening in other places too but here the Allah say why he sent it down this is the reason for his guidance and he said he, it explains the guidance and then also why for Khan and it, then I gives you the criteria of what is guidance because we don't know sometimes we don't know what's guidance so Allah said the criteria for what is guidance that's all that's in the Quran that's why we have, he gave we a whole month to dedicate ourselves, but we shouldn't stop. Don't stop. Read it and keep reading. Some people read it and got ahead, and some people say, don't read, don't stop. No, dude, you're supposed to keep reading it. You keep reading. So you can get behind, you can get ahead. And you're supposed to. You're supposed to keep reading it. You're not supposed to stop. Don't stop because Ramadan's over. You finish it, and you do the special prayers, but when you complete it, it's over it again. Every time you read it, you know you're seeing something that you haven't gotten before. You always see that. Oh, man, wow. It always happens. We evolving, you evolving, your brain cells are growing. Allah bless you to see more. That's why it's called Quran, it's repetition. You gotta keep going so you get more. The more you give yourself to it, the more he'll give you, the more you become broader. Your brain stems get larger. You'll be able to think better, you'll be able to see better. Your life will be better. And you'll have that protection. And it puts a protection, it puts a shield around you that people can't see. The more you give yourself to the Quran. You had a, had a report that one time the prophet had to walk past the enemy. He was reading the Quran. They didn't even see him. That's, they said they didn't see him. He was just reading the Quran. He had, he had to get by. He had no other way to go, but he was reading the Quran. He was born mild, but they didn't see him. We believe in the unseen, don't we? That's a criteria. Once you go past our fatiha, it said this is the book for those who believe in the unseen, right? So we have to believe in the things happening that we don't always know about. Allah just said that we have to have faith and believe that he's with us. He say, he don't. Why you do become busra? He don't want difficulty for you. He wants ease, not difficulty. And he say, he wants you to li kuk milu. Kuk milu. To complete. To complete the days. So things may have happened. But you got to complete those days, brother. If you didn't, sister, if you didn't get complete them, complete your days. Do what you can to complete your days. Or you got to do what you got to do to do the expediation. If you, if you can't, if you can't complete those days, but Allah wants you to complete them, you know, and he said, and he says also, he said, and why lead to kabiru Allah, lead to kabiru Allah. This is the purpose of this was all this is all about. Kabiru, you hear kabara, you hear, you hear uh, akbar in that, don't you? Kabara, this is another, this is another prayer. It, it, it means to magnify, to make Allah bigger in your life. To make Allah bigger in your life. In that he said, Allah ma. And that he has guided you. And that he has guided you. Why? And he said, and because and we heard La Allah, and, 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 the, and we had it all, we had that, and the, the verse that's been recited all month. La alakun tatakun, right? La alakun tatakun. Maybe for chance. For chance. You have resistance. You have restraint. You have discipline. You have this consciousness. So he uses the word la alakun right here too again. La alakun. Maybe. Perhaps. For chance. That's kurun. You'll be grateful. You'll be appreciative. He said, maybe. So we're his creation. We're Allah's creation. We don't even own ourselves. We belong to Allah. That's what we say. In the wa inna ilayhi rajun. We belong to Allah. When somebody passed, you, you got to be reminded. You can't. They don't belong to you. You can't keep them here. They can't stay. It's not up to you. We belong to Allah. We're His creation, and the creation needs to obey its Creator. The creation needs to praise its Creator. The creation needs to be appreciative. La alakum teshkarun. The creation needs to be thankful. And the more the creation does, and Allah says this, the better it becomes. The better it becomes. The better it becomes. It's for us that we have revelation. It's for Anna, Allah said, He sent that. It's for us. And He gives us prayer. We've been doing all these special prayers and everything. You know? Again, Allah doesn't need it. We doesn't need our prayers. We don't give Allah anything. We don't give Him anything. We say, well, I give him my obedience. No, he, he don't need it. 
You can give it, but he don't need it. He, he asks for it, but he don't need it. Yeah, but it's for us. That's for us. We don't get nothing. We're going to gain. He's not getting anything from that. I don't get anything. It's for us. We can't increase a law in any amount, as he says in the Quran. In any amount, no, in nothing. You know, people, kids give things to us, they, they make it cause us to expand. You know, people do things, we feel good. A lie like that, he don't need things like that. So nothing causes him to, 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 to expand. Because he, he, he doesn't, you know. When you say something loves somebody he likes, that just means that it's met his criteria. He just let us know. He just give us terms that's, that's familiar for us. But he don't need, that's not, he, not, he, he, not, he don't have human emotions. Love and hate, that stuff, you know, you can't anger a law. You know, it's not, he's not mean like that. Those, those are terms for us because he gave us those emotions. So he mentions those things, us. But he don't, he don't, he don't respond like that. You can't, why can something affect him and make him, you can make him anger? You know, if you can't affect, nothing can, they, now you saying something can affect the law. Curve him, call, you know, nothing causes him. He is the cause. The uncaused cause is our law. So we don't give him anything. And increase him at least whatever we want to do for him. He is all ready and will complain to be perfect. He wants us to know. We've been reading the Quran that he didn't create this world for him to feed upon. No way he created it. He didn't create it for him, uh, to give him any strength. Yeah, make him any stronger. He says in the Quran, if we read, he said, Surahu, Surahu. So Rao and Allah has sakra lakum math he some way to a math for the order. I mean, that's a command, really. He said, look. Now when he give us command that it means we're supposed to apply this. And see with this. You know, for every outer sense, we have uh, we have we have the sight, hearing, seeing. He said these are outer sense, but that's an inner connection. So he wants it with the inner. Look! Can't you see in Allah, really, surely Allah has subjected to you, made for you, everything for you that's in the heavens and the earth. He created it for us, everything in the heavens, down to and beyond the insects, all of that, all of that's for us. See, see, see what Allah has done for you, all for the human being, and that should help us see ourselves in a better light. To know that you've been given that. And that's quite a bit. And it's wide. It's a wide expanse in terms of how I focus. That's why, again, we say Allahu Akbar. God wants to think big. He can never become bigger than him, but he wants to think big and do big things. That's why man's been able to go out now and send their brain out because they're able to think big, because they're never going to be bigger than Allah. But Allah wants us to do that. He has given us that capacity not to be bogged down in small things. A little fuse with one another. That's so small. That's what Satan loves because he knows when you get involved in that, then that cuts off the cells in your brain for broader progress. And you become narrow. It narrows you. You begin to become narrow. You're not going to become broad. Your perspective becomes narrow. The more you focus on those little small things, you can't see the bigger picture. And Satan don't want you to see the bigger picture because Allah created you for the bigger picture. And his job is to show Allah they ain't worthy of it. Man is the only creature. The only creature we look at, we, we start, the only creature finding joy and happiness and pleasure, usefulness in everything that Allah has created. We the only ones that have museums. This is the, here we got some, several there are several Smithsonian uh, museums with different types of things in them, insects, sea life, all kind of things that's in them. You know, all of this is proof. With all these things we've done, there's proof that all of this is for us. So we should be to see. We shouldn't confine ourselves to small things. We should be trying to do bigger things. And the more we come together, I want to see our pictures so we can do bigger things together. Do massive things. We should be all over this city. Wherever Muslims are, we should be all over. The, that's what they've done in the history. And we say Islam is going to be to get to put up dynamic structures. They've been able to progress in business. They've been able to progress in science. All of these things. They've been coming together, working together, keeping their mind on, on the bigger. That's what the message is. It's open space to make you think big. That's where the domes, they understood it with the domes. But this is the dome, free dome, free to mind. But that freed you can be able to grow. He wants us to see that. What he says to man, he said, man, think not that your creation is a bigger matter than the creation of the world, the heavens and the earth. So God, he tells us, we read that in the Quran, he tells us to warn us that if you don't use a power, brother, if you don't use a power, sister, that's bigger than yourself, and Allah is saying, I give you the Makaran, and my word is a power bigger than yourself, if you distrust it. 
If you trust me, trust my word, obey it, then you'll have a power working on your side that's bigger than you. That's bigger than you. Bigger than everything that can tempt you. Drugs, alcohol, he said, even bigger than Satan himself. And that's God do will be an enemy to all man. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Watch the last two. Watch the lamb. Allah Rasulullah Kareem. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we've come through Ramadan. We're into the Eid now. We're celebrating uh, in the tenth month. We've come through the ninth month. We're into the tenth month now, and we obviously we reflect back on this. We look at what Allah has done for us to bring us to where we are now. He cautioned us. Obviously, that picture takes us to, to, to uh, the shaitan as a uh, shaitan tempted Adam. Uh, when, uh, he was given uh, the command to fast. He was given the command to fast. Uh, and of course, uh, he was tempted. He was tempted uh, by, by the great, the great uh, shaitan. He was deceived, actually. He was deceived. And, um, and Allah tells us, don't let Satan get you like he got your parents. And that's how, that's how he doesn't know. That's how, that's how it works, you know. He, Deceives, he's subtle, he's subtle, you know. All these things are subtle. And that's why in some scriptures uh, he's called Prince of the Air, meaning that he gets you through influences. He influences you through different things, you know. And they spend so much money on commercials now because uh, they know just that you want to have, they can, you, you, when you leave, they, they, some reason the vibe just all of a sudden turns up. I mean, you have the TV turned off, so when that commercial comes on, you leave the room to go get something, the TV comes up. And that thing will find your subconscious and it go right in your subconscious. All of a sudden now you're liking a certain car, liking a certain product, doing it. Don't know why. So they put that thing in the mind. They put it there. You know, subtle, these suggestions to cause you desiring things and wanting things, your appetites be, be, becoming bigger for things. You know, they put things all in front of you, all in society. You know, and uh, so Allah say, you know, you know, we look at that, that what is happening. Don't let it happen to you and come out of the nature. That caused that you to come out of the nature that Allah put you in and he created you for. But we know he gave us Muhammad the prophet. Again, the prayers and peace be upon him. And we said during the year day that he, we see him. Now, he survived. He fasted. He fasted, too. He survived. He fasted before revelation from corruption. He fasted from ignorance. He fasted from violence. all those things, you know. Uh, didn't give in to the idols. None of those stuff. He survived in that world where they gave himself to that. But he fasted from that stuff. Never touched those things, you know. And he never behaved in a way that Allah would not approve. And that's before he had revelation. Allah made that a matter of revelation. He said, Let, tell them, I lived a lifetime among you. Man, lived 40 years. We didn't have revelation. He wanted, Allah wanted that to be in the scripture for everybody to see. Just Muslims. So others, when they look at him, they see that he didn't tell. Go look at his history. The Allah made sure his history was in real history, not just in scriptural true history. There are other people that are not Muslims. They have said things about him. They studied him. They found him. They found him. They recorded about him during his life. So Allah put it in the Quran. Now you go look at it for yourself. I'm telling you, it's scripture. Here's in the Quran. Your prophets are only in scripture. There are all the other prophets, the only, but Islam validates the rest of them as well through Muhammad the prophet, the presence of peace upon him. That's why when we take a shahadatain and, 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 and bear with the law, and we say shahadatain and Muhammadan, it's not Muhammad, it's Muhammadan. It's a new nation there. It's not even supposed to be grammatically correct. But that's just to say, because in him are also all the other prophets. That's why it's Muhammadan Rasulullah. Muhammadan Rasulullah. That's how we have to say that. You know? But his name is a proper noun, like putting an uh, aleph lamb or something, making it definite. But, but we can't say that way because in him, we're acknowledging all the prophets. We believe in all the prophets uh, in him. So Allah, Allah gives us that. So he lets us know what's possible for us, how we've been able to survive. And Allah said, you know, the biggest problem for us, he said, why in, why in there? And verily, surely, daily, but therein, that you delune be ahwa'i him be ghayril ilm. That most, most. Most, most of the people, they are misled. They misled. And you see, you hear this, you see the word, you delune, you delune, you delune, you delune. You hear Darlene in that, Darlene, Darlene. So most people, they just off, they go astray. They miss, they miss the mark. He what? Be at where in him. Because of your appetites, your desires, your passions. They've been stretched and they've gone outside of the island. 
العلم بغير العلم knowledge from Allah this knowledge from Allah in the science of things the science of things and that tells us see this is the key for us you know yes Ramadan is to strengthen our taqwa and when our taqwa to be strong and he and he it lets us know that Satan got our parents because he got them to come out of the dress so taqwa is a dress it's a clothing it's, that's our levis that's our dress clothing and we're supposed to keep that on all the time because that's your protection but Satan he sort of caused him to come out of that dress to take taqwa off. And then he was able to get in on the appetite. That's how he get us. But you load, load that, load that, your, your taqwa, and he slip in. And, you, and then appetites come on, you know? And the seducer, he had to fire up your appetites first. He fired up Adam's appetite. Adam was outside. He, he, he was only on his own. He was outside of that. He, get, he had to get you hungry. Get you attracted to something that you want, something that you want to consume, something that you want to eat. You know, then he begin to build it up and stretch it up and then, you know, to something that you think will make you bigger, something you think will make you better, something you think will make you more important, more wise. That's what he told, told Adam, you know, that this would do this for you. But this is what he does. So that's how he reached Adam. He was Ahwar. And that's why Ramadan was to check that for us, to check it. So Satan couldn't reach us to that. We'll check it during the month of Ramadan. But we're supposed to do it all the time. All the time. So as we come out of Ramadan now, we're into the month of Shawwal. And of course, um, uh, this is the time for us to look at uh, continuing. You know, we get a chance to continue uh, the fast. You know, some people, uh, they'll do the Shawwal fast and then they'll go back. Since you have a whole year to, to really to, to, to complete your fast before the next Ramadan, long to do before the next Ramadan. Uh, then some people want to go ahead and get theirs out of the way. If you can do both, do both. But, but again, the Shawwal, the Shawwal fast. Uh, it's optional. And of course, we know our prophet, he says, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan and then and then follows it with six days of fasting in this month, he is that it will be as if he had fasted full year. It will be as if he fasted full year. If you get the six months in with your days, now, but you got to have your, your days. and You got to get those days done, too, in order to get the credit for, for a full a full a full year. And we know also in the in the reports, the hadith. Authentic hadiths. Uh, that, that was Muslim too. And this was it says the reward of good deeds are ten times, are times ten. So it says it says it says, uh, it says Ramadan is like fasting for ten months, ten months. So that's three hundred days. That's for the month of Ramadan. And then when you add the six days of Shawwal, it's like fasting for another two months. So that's sixty days times ten. So that's why you say times ten, and that's six. So you put that three six together, then you have your twelve months. That's your 12 months, so that's how you get your first land. And so, and, and when you look at, you know, when life is in the womb, uh, you know, the way Allah have designed things, you know, when life is conceived in the womb, the life, life has spirit. It's spirit, you know, that's the essence of everything. Allah talks about the, the, uh, the, the root and everything. And that's the first life. The first life is spirit. And, that, and, uh, and one of the scholars said that's one of the reasons why Allah shows us that the water comes off first because water represents spirit, spirituality. It shows that the first life is spiritual. It's more spiritual than anything else. And, and so that's a, a sign of the purity. A sign of the purity is when the, when the baby is born now, after that nine months into the ten months, and the science uh, tells us that it has six months. The science tells us now that the baby has six months of immunity uh, from diseases uh, that, that will get us. Six months. You know, coming out of that state of purity. So here we are around this. So Allah gives us these six days coming out of this state, this womb of Ramadan. He gives us six days equals 60 days. And here the science said six months when the baby comes out of a womb. And here we are coming out of a womb this month of Ramadan. Uh, so six days of a voluntary fast are to Ramadan. Understand this now. Six days of the voluntary fast are to Ramadan what our sunnah prayers are to our obligatory prayers. So we, this, this is how we have to see this. And uh, so the fast, uh, you know, we do fast in Shaban, we do fast in Shawal. Uh, they're like sunnah prayers to accompany our five uh, for our prayers. And we know that the extra prayers, the prayers that we do before and after the mandatory prayer, what they do is they help cover up deficiencies, deficiencies in our mandatory prayers. That's why it's important to do those things, you know, because we always uh, may do things. We may be distracted or whatever the case might be. So you want to get those prayers in because a lot of what he look at and find deficiencies in your main prayer. Then he'll look at the extra prayers. You look at your extra prayers. So, and that's what the report says on the day of judgment. Our volunteer acts of worship will compensate for the shortcomings, for the shortcomings and how we carried out our duties, our, our mandatory duties uh, to Allah. And we know most of us, we have deficiencies in observance of the Ramadan fast. 
And, we, and we, we're talking about deficiency, not talking about like, missing a day of fast, because you got to make that up. We're talking about, you know, the, the, in conduct, being distracted, and those kind of things, from the value of your worship while you're fasting. We, we know the quality of that day. Uh, you may have sustained abstained from food and drink, but then you may have done other things that are quality uh, that, that you've done. And so, so again, these extra uh, fasts help, help, help uh, clean that up as well. Uh, so our return, and this is our return to the habit of fasting right after Ramadan. Do you know that if you can do that, if you can return to the habit of fasting right after Ramadan, then that's a sign that our fast was accepted. If you can, if you can do some extra days right after Ramadan, that's a, fast, that's a sign to you from Allah that your fast was accepted. When Allah accepts our worship, this is how Allah works. We where He blesses us to engage in more, to do more of those kind of things. You, you have the mind to do that so you'll know. You know, uh, so the reward of virtue is for the virtue. This is what our beloved prophet have taught us. And uh, so, so following a good deed with others is a sign that the first good deed, if it's, that's if you want to know if it's been accepted. You follow it up with another good deed. If you're able to do that, you, you'll focus on doing that. So by contrast, if a person's good deed is followed by a sinful one, it is an indication that his first good deed was not accepted. If you do a good deed and all of a sudden you done did something bad, that's a sign that what you, did, what you did wasn't accepted. Apparently, you may not have had the right disposition. Your mind may be right. You may have done it for the wrong reason. And we do things with the wrong intentions sometimes. We may do something good, but the intent behind it might not be good. So, then, so a lot that's saying, that's saying that it wasn't accepted. So everything you do good, not necessarily that it was accepted. And this is, a, this is one of the things a lot gives us to let us know. So the day of the Eid of future, the, first, the, 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 the day when the fast is rewarded, you know, uh, you're getting into the habit of fasting again soon after. You know, as a means of giving thanks to Allah for the blessings that we have received. And, uh, and the month of Shawwal is one way to express our thanks to Allah, you know, for the blessing of Ramadan. So thank him for the blessing of Ramadan. We know we got a lot of help during the month of Ramadan. So we very close with this. A student of Muhammad the Prophet, the present peace upon him, was asked about the blessings of various acts of devotion. And this was the reply. He said, do not ask about the blessings that can be earned by performing these acts of worship. Now, I hope you understand this. Somebody say, well, how many blessings would I get if I do this? How many blessings would I get? So this person asked this question. And the prophet said, don't do that. Don't ask about the blessings. They say, rather, rather, ask how you can show your thanks to Allah if he blesses you to perform them, for he is the one who assists us in doing so in the first place. So this, is, uh, this is helps us with, uh, with our focus. So every blessing that Allah gives us is something that we have to be thankful for. So it tells us, so, so, so when Allah blesses us to show thanks, it's another blessing from Allah that deserves further thanks. And if we continue to show further thanks, then in turn, it's another blessing deserving of our gratitude. See how the cycle goes? This is how the cycle goes. And then there's no end to it. And we know that's the life of the prophet, right? We all know my, our dear beloved prophet, he was, done, he, he was praying all the time. Way beyond it, even, even the extra prayers. And they want to know why you're praying so much. They say, Allah has already forgiven you. And he said, well, it should not be just that much more thankful. So he said, he's applying this now. He's saying this. Should not be just that much more thankful. So it's about the, the last thing Allah said in, in ayah about, about Ramadan. Alakum, Masurun. Maybe for check, you'll be grateful. I'm doing this for you. And look at the prophet. He saw Allah did something for me. So should not be more thankful. That's why. They're asking, your feet are swelling. Why are you doing that? He said, that's why. He said, should not be just that much more thankful. This is why we should do things. I mean, come to Salah. Okay, we do have announcements uh, immediately after for those who can stay for the announcements, inshallah. And we'll talk about uh, Juma uh, next Friday uh, as well. As always, make sure your lines are straight uh, and be deliberate about making sure your lines are straight. Uh, should we start the prayer and you're still trying to line up, don't just stop praying and your line is crooked. Get your line straight first. Take the time to get your line straight and then join the prayer. Now go ahead and leave, leave it there because it won't come back. So. Yes, yeah, go on that side of the side.
الله اكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير مغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي انقضى ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع الأسر يسرا إن مع الأسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فرغب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير مغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين كل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 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 السلام عليكم السلام عليكم عيد مبارك We're on day three now. We have a lot of activity still uh, going on this weekend. Uh, so please uh, go to the website, BC uh, Eid, E I D Fest, F E S T, uh, dot org, and uh, see what else is out there left. There are several things out there left. 
uh, that we can sign up for and continue to enjoy ourselves, let our children enjoy themselves. There are things for our seniors, there are things for smaller children, there are things for teenagers, uh, young adults, et cetera. Let's enjoy these things, these things being put together for our community. Uh, this is the, these are our celebrations that are given to us to celebrate uh, our return to our nature. Uh, next week, we're going to try to do the Juma at the Masjid on the parking lot. We're trying to get another tent up. We're going to have two large tents uh, where the side comes down. We should be, we, we're hoping to have those up uh, before Friday, next Friday. So we'll do the, the Juma there, uh, inshallah. Uh, and we'll set things up, speakers will be comfort there. And because we have, we have uh, other things, we, have the, we also have 1515, we, we have also uh, for our sisters who don't want to be out, they can be in 1515. That's been opened up widely, as we know. Uh, and we'll have the speakers and, and those kind of things. But 1515, those two is two large tents, and they can accommodate us uh, nicely. Uh, and I think it'll be good for us if we can be there. The weather's getting nicer now, inshallah. Uh, but that's the plan for now. But stay tuned. Uh, our, dear, our dear sister Ndidi is still with us. Uh, we want to thank our sister Ndidi uh, as well. I mentioned her mother. I didn't know she was still. I mentioned her mother at the Eid uh, uh, that, was, uh, that met with Imam Muhammad and others at the Frederick Douglass house uh, some time ago, inshallah. But she's been doing a wonderful job. Uh, helping us. So I'll let her come up now. And uh, now I'm going to get this in. This is important. Assalamu alaikum. Eid Mubarak. Wow. Right? Like this, this, I mean, this Ramadan has been amazing. It's been different, you know, but it's been amazing and impactful. And I just wanted to um, take a moment to thank every single person who has contributed towards the campaign. I want to give you all an update as to where we are right now. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we're at $71,000 of the $100,000 goal. So we are almost there. So before you leave, please, 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 we're almost there. We're in the last few days of Eid, right? Or the last day of Eid, right? So let's get it over the top. Please take one of these on your way out, scan it, share it with somebody. Literally, if we're at 30,000 left, if we had, what, um, five people to give 6,000 and six people to give 5,000, we would complete the Ramadan goal, right? And so this is really important because, as the imam said, we're trying to get back into the masjid. And this is just one phase for this Ramadan. We're getting this. This is double blessings, right? Because it's Jum'ah and Eid, or Eid and Jum'ah, right, together. So let's get these blessings. Let's continue the Shawal blessings. Let's get that fast on, right? But even if you just share the message, you get blessings for that. So please get one on your way out, scan it, you know, let someone else know that we're almost um, completing the campaign. May Allah forgive everyone their sins. May Allah um, accept everyone's fast and everyone's worship. And it's just been an honor and pleasure to be back home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So, alhamdulillah, we thank a lot for our, our beloved sister. Uh, she's a homie, and she's back home. But, but we had, I think, several several events that were sold out. And I think we hadn't had that in a long time where events were sold out. But we had several back-to-back -back events that were sold out. And we thank a lot for her efforts, uh, her energy that she's putting in to help us trying to raise this money. We still got some funds we got to raise now. Uh, but we're paying things off. We go along. Uh, we're going to need money for the back end. Uh, so keep things coming. We're sacrificing. We're sacrificing for our life, uh, to expand our life. All, every time a mother gives a baby, that life expands, she, she, she risks losing her life because it's a sacrifice. And there were sacrifices made for us to have the life that we have right now, those that came before us. So we are to honor them. You know, you know why you honor the parents? Yeah, all the scriptures say honor the parents. You know why? In the body, it's called reproduction. The re we, we come through reproduction system. And that means that if the parents came together, they've been productive. And that's why you're here, because they've been productive. <laughs> and so now you should honor them by you should be being productive, too, and pay honor to your parents. So let's get productive. And let's continue to do what they did. Let's build. Our, our, those that came before us, that produced us, that gave us life here, they were productive, produced the building, produced the whole community. Northeast, southeast, all across the city, we have we got a $50 million structure up right now because those that came before us secured that property for us. They secured that for us. We're on Northwest here because they secured that property for us. And we're building on it. We're expanding that now. And we got to keep going. We can't stop. We can't stop. Now, a lot of says we read when you finish one thing, you got to keep going. We got to get it over until it's over. We got to do as much as we can while we can. Because all we have is what we do here during our time here. Nobody else's time. A lot, if y'all reading the Quran and we've been reading it, a lot of us say, look, it's these people. 
They're going to get what they earn. They said, now you, now you're going to get what you earn. Allah said that many times in the Quran. We've read that many times. He was giving us, look at that history. Look at these people. Look at the things they've done. So that was good. They're going to get what they did and what they earned. And now you look at you. You're going to get what you earned. So think about yourself and what you got to do. And let's do it. Let's do it together. All right. So what else we got here? Um, again, I uh, want to certainly thank everybody so far. We had a good Eid day, the first day of Eid. I want to thank all those who were participating. Uh, we have a basketball uh, brother, uh, Yushaw. I think I saw him here earlier somewhere. He may have left, but he's going to be heading up uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow at 930. Um, I thought we got Howard Rick Sunday. We got Howard. We got tur tur Turkey Thicket. Turkey Thicket. Right there, turkey Thicket. Did we get did we Howard basketball court? Did we get Turkey Thicket? Okay. Okay. So the basketball tournament, basketball tournament, 930. Uh, to 1030 at Turkey Thicket Recreation Center. That's tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Uh, now that uh, we plan to be there uh, for that uh, as well. Ed Fitcher, uh 2024 basketball tournament. So join us for an exciting basketball tournament featuring some of the teams in the region. The court is our stage. Let's put on. I think we sold out. I think we got, got a lot of participation. A lot of people signed up for that already. So hope to see you there uh, to support that event. Uh, brothers, sisters as well will be there to support that event. Uh, we are rescheduling the cipher and spoken word. I got a fly, so that's going to be rescheduled, uh, but that's going to be held on 8th Street. Uh, pay attention to that, that website I gave you earlier, uh, dcefest.org. Uh, the Ed Fitra Live Science Exportation, that's sold out right now, so you won't be able to get that in and out event. That's sold out. Uh, that's at Hillcrest Recreation Center. Uh, so, alhamdulillah. Uh, we have the, this is for our uh, seniors. Uh, I think the age uh, is it's like 55 or something over. Art Gallery Adult Social. That's going to be a nice event. Uh, that's tomorrow also at 8 o'clock p.m. 8 o'clock p.m. Go to D.C. Eid Fest and sign up for that. That's 35 a person. It's going to be a very nice event. Uh, food, drink, music, games, an art exhibit. It's going to be real nice stuff here. Uh, elegant, elegant occasion uh, on 8th Street. Uh, yeah, 1402 8th Street. But you got to sign up now. Go sign up uh, on that. If you, you need help, call us and we'll help you. Uh, uh, Sunday Seniors Chat and Chew event, that's sold out. So that's, that event is sold out. Another event, the Bus Boys and Poet event, uh, that's sold out. Um, also, uh, the Muslim Journal is featuring our uh, ribbon cutting, uh, uh, a featured uh, uh, edition of the Muslim Journal. So get that Muslim Journal. Keep it as a keepsake on the Clara. Uh, a lot of photos in there, and a nice story is in that, in that article and, uh, as well, living at the Clara. Uh, if you're a veteran, uh, we know we have next week, D.C. Emancipation Day uh, is coming up. Uh, we want anybody that's a veteran, again, to come out and be a part of the parade. We, 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 got, we got a reputation now, uh, them looking for us being in the parade, and they give us a nice shout out at the end of the parade. Uh, so that's going to be on April the 14th. Uh, meet at the Messier parking lot. We will have the bus and other things. We try to get for those who need rides uh, in between 1130 and 1215. That's when you need to meet. Or we can meet at 10th and Pennsylvania Avenue uh, as we participate in the annual Emancipation Day Parade. Emancipation Day Parade. So that adds to the history here. We know in D.C. Uh, the slaves were freed here in D.C. first about 3,000 or so before the January uh, uh, 1863 uh, Emancipation uh, Proclamation. Uh, there's also going to be talking about veterans. There's going to be a veterans meeting yes. April the 20th. A very important meeting. If you're a veteran, please try to make the meeting. If you're a veteran, make the meeting. Or if you're interested in being a part of the, the auxiliary, we're really getting ready to grow this Muslim American Veterans Association. We have auxiliary, auxiliary for those who are not military people but want to want to help out. 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock in, in uh, 1515. That's the building 1515 next to the masjid. Uh, so we hope to see you there. Uh, if you're a veteran, uh, laser tag, uh, laser tag. This is presented by the single to marry S two M single to marry committee presents laser tag. And, uh, so you can go and do laser tag includes, uh, three games of laser tag, uh, enjoy, uh, a few fun rounds of laser tag. And then let's mingle over a meal at a nearby restaurant. Uh, use the laser tag to try to tag your mate, whatever the case might be. Uh, so laser tag. That's going to be um, in Gaithersburg, Gaithersburg, Maryland. 
2 o'clock, Saturday, 2 o'clock, April the 27th, April 27th. Yeah. So that's $30 for three games of laser tag and hang out to so single people. We're all ages uh, for that event. Okay, also now for the married people, that one was for single, this is for the married. Uh, save your space, the second annual. Uh, they say it was so nice. The first one was so nice, they had to do it twice. So this is not the second one. Uh, they wanted to repeat the couple's retreat uh, April 26th to the 28th at Cool Front Resort in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia. They got a lot of activities lined up. Uh, again, uh, 600 for, per couple, per couple, yeah, for that event. You need to contact, um, uh, let's see, uh, bit.ly slash nm nations mars dash marriage dash retreat dash 2024. Uh, that's how you sign. I'll send an email to celebrate marriage at the nationsmars.org if you to get more information. I can just call the message. In. Don't forget to study out Islam. Uh, and let's see, I think we've covered everything. And, uh, share. Share is coming up on uh, April the 20th. We do need help. Uh, again, uh, beat up by 9 30 to help set up. Uh, again, the program is growing. And uh, we need to help people deliver, help with package and everything. Uh, so be there to help that. Food distribution, that's share and food distribution program on that day. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks, Ed Mubarak. <clears throat>